This is the most important resident of the Baltic Sea, the cod. For years, scientists and politicians, activists and consumers have argued about the state of the cod stock. In the spring of 2009, there were reports of a quick recovery that the cod was on its way back, that this was the result of a well-managed fishery. Is it really true? For two years, we followed the cod around the Baltic Sea. Cod caught in illegal nets. Cod causing uncertainty and disagreement in the world of science. So in our assessment, Cod bringing about social deprivation in fishing communities and consequences in faraway continents. And here, cod discarded by super trawlers, thousands of tons thrown away just this year. Fish everyone claims to protect. The Baltic Sea's most important resource is allowed to rot on the seabed. For over a million years, we thrived in a wonderful world of richness and flair. We reproduced happily and adapted to various environments, the Atlantic, Barents Sea and the Baltic Sea. There were so many of us, we nearly made the oceans overflow. Already in the Stone Age, humans enjoyed us. We taste good and contain lots of protein. A thousand years ago, we became a commodity in the Atlantic. But then there were so many of us and so few humans that we continued to prosper for centuries. Everything changed 60 years ago. Giant trawlers started to hunt us. Boats popped up everywhere and they got bigger and bigger. We became fewer and fewer and smaller and smaller it became much harder for us to reproduce. Eventually, off the east coast of Canada, we were almost extinct. Now we're too scarce to build up our cod family again. In the Baltic, we risk the same fate. Today, the question is, will we be given a chance to survive?
This story begins on October the 23rd, 2007. EU fishery ministers gathered in Luxembourg. At this point, the management of the cod fishery in the Baltic was a huge failure. Cod were fewer and smaller than ever. Illegal fishing was blooming and the water quality in the Baltic poorer. Leading scientists recommended an immediate stop to cod fishing in the Eastern Baltic. But EU ministers ignored the advice and allowed continued fishing. With one exception. In Poland, fishermen were forced to dock their boats. The EU had banned all cod fishery, as the Polish fleet had caught too much illegally. But 27-year-old Marcin Holowinski refused to accept EU orders. The first day of the ban, Marcin was catching as much cod as he could. Officially, he was catching flounder, but there was mostly cod in Marcin's net. Cod that Marcin refused to discard. Marcin was only partially trying to hide the catch from our camera. <coughs> He knew inspections were as good as none. This time, Lo Persson was packing her bags in Umeå, northern Sweden. She was 26 years old and about to go to Vancouver in Canada on a study exchange. Lo grew up on the coast, literally a stone's throw from the northern part of the Baltic. Despite being at the sea as a child, she had never given the Baltic Sea much thought. But the Baltic Sea and the cod would soon play an important role in her life. The same autumn, Polish fishermen were protesting in Brussels. Machin had joined the union struggle to save small-scale fishery. <laughs> EU policies affecting Poland were seen as highly unfair. Especially, Machin claims, as there was plenty of cod. <laughs> Przerwa na jakieś delikatne jedzenie, coś, coś ciepłego i z powrotem do roboty. Marcin, nie stoi się na pokładzie, tylko się pracuje. Was Marcin right? After all, his net was full of cod. Huge quantities never reported. Nie umiał badań przeprowadzać, dlatego mówią, że nie ma. Niech taki je jeden z drugim siądzie na pierwszy lepszy kuter. Vancouver 
Vancouver, Canada. Lou Persham was studying at the University of British Columbia. Across the hall was Professor Daniel Pauly, a world-renowned scientist. Pauly has seen nine out of ten predatory fish disappear so from the world's oceans. He considers official fishery data incomplete and that this contributes to overfishing. He has set up an independent research project to find out how much fish is really killed as a consequence of fishing. It doesn't matter to the fish whether they are caught by an illegal fishery or a legal fishery. It doesn't matter whether they are part of a quota or they are discarded or not. It doesn't matter, they are dead. They are dead. And the general public should know about all the source of mortality, all the source of, of catches on them. The purpose of Pauli's work is to improve knowledge about threatened fish species. In the spring of 2008, he put together a team for the Baltic Sea. Lou Persian was hired as research assistant working with Danish research scientist Peter Rossing. We're trying to reconstruct the catches in the Baltic Sea. Do you actually have a substantial amount of catches that does not actually figure in the official statistics? As you know, you have fish that are discarded, that are not landed, you have fish that are sold illegally. And that's an issue because if you don't have the proper catch numbers, you cannot actually assess what's going on in the ocean. It was the start of a challenging task. Trots att jag då har växt upp i havet så det skulle bli kul att få lära sig mer om någonting som har varit väldigt nära mig men jag inte vet så mycket om. The cod. Gadus marhua in Latin. A female can produce a million eggs, but only a handful usually survives past 4 months. But adult cod have few enemies, and if left alone, the stocks can grow very large. Lowe realized it's impossible to count every cod in the sea. She learned how scientists sample landings from commercial fishing and scientific research vessels. Here, length age and weight are measured. The size of the cod stock is then calculated. Here's how to survive in the Baltic. First, avoid the following. Giant trawlers, long nets, hooks, ghost nets and people who consider catching us a sport. Then, if you're still alive, please reproduce as quickly as possible. Avoid areas where the seabed is dead and where there's not enough salt in the water. Our eggs won't survive there, they'll sink and die. So please pray to cod for currents that will carry salt water from Kattegat into our basin. One more thing, watch out for the sprat. Because we're not around to eat as many sprat as we used to, the sprat are having the time of their lives. They now dominate the Baltic. It's them eating us, our small, innocent baby eggs. They eat almost all the animal plankton in the Baltic, and less animal plankton can cause algae blooms. The humans up there hate that. With all that green stuff floating around, they can't enjoy taking a plunge in the Baltic. Get humans to understand that everything's connected, that we all need each other. Oh, but for God's sake, we don't need them humans, do we? The big cod fishing boom in the Baltic occurred in the 1980s. Unusually favorable conditions for recruitment resulted in record catches. For many years, scientists believed the world's cod stock was inexhaustible. But that was before the catastrophe in Canada.
Here, off the coast of Newfoundland, Canada, the world's largest cod fishery existed for 500 years. Catches were enormous. But one day in 1992, the cod was gone. Rampant overfishing had led to an ecological disaster. 40,000 jobs were lost overnight. Newfoundland was in shock. Furious fishermen demanded higher compensation and tried to break into the minister in charge. We're in an emergency situation here. We destroyed one of the great protein components of the breadbasket of the planet, and we did it with our eyes wide open. Brian Tobin was Minister of Fisheries in Canada during the years following the collapse. Here, he's speaking to Baltic Sea scientists and politicians. You can actually have a large, what appears to be successful fishery this year, and the very next year you can go out there and have a total collapse on your hands. That's what happened in Canada. The scars are still visible today. Abandoned fish production plants, houses and boats for sale, and unemployment. Some speak of a small recovery of the cod, even in Canada. But no one here would ever consider fishing cod again. The memories of 1992 are still fresh. Six generations down the line passed out, and he's done nothing but S-H-I-T to us. Glenn Critch was upset back then, 17 years ago. Today, he's fishing for crab. He's given up on cod. We're smart enough to, have to learn our lesson, I hope, from the cod, that we won't let it happen. You know, what happened to the cod will happen to the crab, we hope. The collapse in Canada did not lead to any drastic measures in the Baltic Sea. On the contrary, fishermen were encouraged with loans and subsidies to build bigger and more efficient boats. Former Eastern Bloc countries invested in their fleet. And eventually, super trawlers started to appear, financed by EU subsidies. Here in Brussels, decisions are taken concerning our death. And here are the EU fisheries ministers. Life for them is not easy. First, they have to protect us. And in formal speeches, they talk about preserving fish stocks, using rather than abusing us, and letting us live so we can procreate. But they also have to consider the fishing industry. People with power and influence who vote in political elections. We COD don't have the vote. We've only got science on our side. But the politicians haven't bothered to heed the scientists' warnings. In the struggle between healthy environment and financial gain, making a profit has always prevailed. The EU and its fishing nations have paid out millions to the ones making a living by killing us. They call it subsidies. Subsidies for bigger boats, more efficient trawlers and the latest equipment. But now it seems the ministers have decided to give us a chance. Finally, they have listened to the scientists. The question is, will we be left in peace long enough to get back on our fins? Cod willing, we'll manage. Swedish fisherman Kenneth Bengtsson has been fishing his whole life. On board his 26-meter vessel, Nordia Afhervik, Kenneth is a master of tracking and catching cod. This day, Kenneth had a lucky draw. But there was a problem. The catch was too big almost a thousand kilos more than his allowed quota.
The rules forbid Kenneth to land a single cod exceeding the limit. To follow EU regulations, he had to dump it all. 1,000 kilos of quality fish. Not a single cod survived. Ja, det känns ju inte bra alltså. Det här man visst de hade klarat det och förfarande levt så här man ju inte tänkt så mycket på. Then the dumping continued. As the rest of the catch was fed into the cleaning machine, cod below the minimum landing size of 38 centimeters were ejected. They were young cod that if they were left to live, could have grown and reproduced. As Lowe learned more about the cod, she realized that a cod's reproductive ability increases faster than its weight. This giant, weighing 15 kilos, carries a lot more row than several smaller cod with the same collective weight would. If a young cod weighing 200 grams is allowed to live, it will, after two years, weigh almost 900 grams. That's a net gain of 450% in two years. The cod plays an important role in the Baltic Sea ecosystem. New findings indicate that overfishing of cod contributes to increased algae blooms. The reduction in cod population has affected these, these blooms, not only climate change and eutrophication, actually. Okay. In Brussels in January 2008, measures were taken that many say should have been in place a long time ago. Commissioner Joe Borg is in charge of maritime affairs and fisheries. We now have a recovery plan in place which gives a more long-term approach because we need to turn around the situation of, over, of overcapacity, of overfishing, so that we can regain a healthy stock in the Baltic Sea. The EU's recovery plan for the COD was implemented in January 2008. Simply put, the plan stated that fewer than three out of ten grown cod in the Eastern Baltic should be caught. Previous years, it had been as much as six out of ten. Added to this, tougher inspections were implemented to combat illegal fishing. But out at sea, Marchin refused to comply with the rules. Back in the harbor, Marcin's boat, Dar 55, was inspected. The inspector, Mr. Tadeus, is part of the EU's comprehensive campaign against illegal fishing. He fined Marcin 500 euros for 300 kilos of illegally caught cod. June 2008. 
the fishing industry and environmental organizations met in Riga. In their meeting, they agreed to support the EU's recovery plan. But the plan contains no concrete measures to stop the dumping of cod. At the same time, another significant event occurred. Scientific research vessels noted more cod of certain year classes. The right temperature, combined with saltwater influxes from years before, seemed to have improved reproduction. It was a blessing of nature, according to Poland's top fishery scientist. The levy, które kiedyś były częste, prawie co rocznie albo co dwa trzy lata, weszły w jakiś taki dość dziwny cykl dziesięcioletni. I ostatni taki poważniejszy wlew miał miejsce w 2003 roku. To był to pierwszy dobry rocznik po ładnych kilku latach posuchy. W związku z tym, że ten wlew był stosunkowo duży, te wody dobre dorszowe utrzymywały się przez dłuższy okres czasu. No one knew for sure how considerable the increase was. The cod had been lucky for once. In 2008, protests of Polish fishermen escalated. Despite reports that the cod was on its way back, the fishermen were not allowed to fish. <laughs> Jednym z postulatów jest to, że jeśli ktoś nam nie pozwala pracować, no to powinni nam dać za to jakiekolwiek pieniądze, a w ogóle jakąkolwiek perspektywę tego zawodu. December 29th, 2008. Polish authorities call for a meeting to meet EU demands. A drastic decision had been made. Only one third of the Polish fleet would be allowed to fish. And it was decided in a lottery. Losers would receive 2,500 euros a month. Winning boats would get fishing permits. And with hard work, they could make a decent living. <laughs> <laughs> the following spring, Lou visited Poland. She wanted to see the reality behind scientific reports and statistics. <laughs> Była taka sytuacja, wiesz, że staliśmy obok statku badawczego, który twierdził, że na danym obszarze w ogóle nie istnieje życie biologiczne na dnie, bo tam jest brak tlenu. A myśmy mieli siatki tak wypchane rybą, że dawno tyle nie widziałem. Badanie teraz zależy w tej chwili od tego, kto płaci za badanie. Taki jest rezultat. Fiskarna upplever ofta att forskarna ljuger. Jag tror ju på forskningen. Alltså jag tror inte att man sitter här och hittar på att det inte finns fisk bara för att man ska jävlas med fiskarna. Utan det baseras ju på ja, det bästa man vet enligt som vet, vetenskapligt. Och att det misstämmer så mycket mot vad fiskarna upplever är ju jätteproblematiskt om man ska få dem med sig på sina förvaltningsbeslut. It's really sad, I think. Lowe learned that only nine boats in Dalovko were allowed to fish. Only a few years ago, it had been over 60. That time, Lesak had worked out at sea. Now he cleans Marcin's net with his son Grecio. 
Pan pływał kiedyś? Tak, 24 lat. Żyć trzeba Wszystko poszło. The cod fishery crisis brought about unemployment and alcoholism. Most people, like Lesek, had to do without financial support. When we met Lesak again, he was noticeably weary and forced to work long hours. His wages were paid in fish. The last time we met Lesak, he was homeless. He slept together with his son in an abandoned bunker. Myśmy go sami nie wyłowili. Bo i Ruskie, i Niemcy, i Szwedzi, i Duńczycy, i Łotyjsze łapali tak samo. Litwinie. Także to... No i takie warunki tu mamy, panie, że nie. Przewrócił się. Koło tam. Bo po rybę poszedł. Obalił się. No naprawdę mówię. Odmrożony już był. Tatuś, spoczywaj w pokoju. Wernemunde, Northern Germany. Research vessel Walter Herwig just left shore. On board, was low Persian. An underwater camera was attached to the trawl. This way the scientists could study what happens down below. The trawl doors plough the bottom. Frightened, the cod are unable to swim away. Once exhausted, the cod is inevitably sucked into the trawl. When the trawl reaches the surface, most of the cod have already died from decompression sickness. It doesn't survive even if it's thrown back into the water. Here in this area, we have discards uh, of sometimes 30%, 40%, up to, in one case, 80% of the catch was thrown away. Lowe met one of Germany's top fishery scientists, Dr. Cornelius Hammer. And uh, that is hideous. Um, it, yeah. It's an absurd situation that a fisherman has to throw away his catch from tomorrow. So the, the least thing we can do is to quantify, to try to quantify this amount of discard so that we at least can include it into our assessment work. No one knows exactly how much cod is discarded in the Baltic Sea. In 2008, the official estimate was around 7%, or 4,500 tons. Lowe suspected the real number was a lot higher. And with the recent accumulation of cod, discards were on the rise. It's a hard to believe mismanagement of the Baltic's most important resource, and especially upsetting in fishing communities like Dalovko. 
annoyed, Machin and his companions watched as foreign trawlers docked in their harbour. Swedish trawler Runavik was one. Its captain spoke of huge amounts of cod being discarded. In January, in fjol var den månad vi hade störst utkast. Vi hade cirka ett och ett halvt ton kvar till vår veckokvot. Och vi fick nästan åtta ton i ett drag. Så det var sju ton vi slängde över bord på en gång. Och så blev det fyra veckor i rad. Så runt 25 ton slängde vi på en månad. Dumpa så mycket fisk dött i havet. Det förstör ju både havet och förstör bottnarna. Plus att det är ju vår framtid som vi slänger tillbaka. Man försöker ju vända sig bort och tänka på något annat. Man ser nästan en hel ö med fisk flyta runt. Det är inte roligt att se. Dobrze bzdura jest. I przy tym wszyscy mówią, że to jest wszystko okej. Small scale Polish fishermen questioned why trawlers could dump without repercussion, while they had to endure extensive and expensive controls. Biedny polski rybaczek se złapał 300 kilo i wiesz, afera. Coś nie halo, nie? It's not only cod caught above the quota or that's below minimum landing size that is dumped. Here's the Polish vessel Col 8, which caught cod in its sprat trawl. The practice of discarding is due to EU regulations and overcapacity and occurs across the Union. Here is a British trawler high grading its catch by throwing box after box of less valuable fish species overboard the value of landed fish is maximized. Decision makers in Brussels have discussed the problem for years with no result. The issue is too complex they say. But here, in a neighbouring country, a simple solution has been adopted. Dumping of fish uh, is illegal in Norway because we want to have the full control of, of the outtake of the resources, of how much the fishermen catch. And also we think that it is uh, morally uh, not good practice to dump fish. In Norway, all fish caught has to be landed. This way, it's easier to estimate the size of the fish stocks. In the areas of the Baltic Sea, this is very difficult. A lot more fish is caught than what is counted against the quota in these areas. So it creates um, quite a big problem when we try to assess the status of the fish stocks uh, in these areas. We are working intensely to bring about a situation of a turnaround with regard to discards. I am hoping we can realistically envisage an elimination of discards a couple of years after 2013. Borg hopes discards will be prohibited by 2015, at the earliest. Before then, dumping will continue and part of the cod stock increase will be thrown back into the sea, dead.
Machin is visiting Sweden. He is no longer fishing illegally. He has decided to take advantage of the new regulations. Martin is looking for small fishing vessels. He wants to buy three or four of them. Next year he could be compensated 2,500 euros a month for each boat, if he doesn't fish, according to the new regulations. Ostateczna cena? Niech od tyłem. Tak od mnie się wiem tyłem sam. Dobra, to wszystko dogadane. Thanks. Yeah. It was time for Lou to review her findings. Over the last year, she has spoken to cod and fishery experts. She has been given unofficial information about illegal catches. She's put together estimates of discarded cod. Lowe also decided to include figures for bycatch and angling and cod eaten directly from fishing nets by seals as well as cod dying in so-called ghost nets, abandoned fishing gear on the seabed. Pauli's team combined Lowe's findings with estimates from other Baltic Sea countries. The results were alarmingly similar to that of other seas. Between 1992 and 2007, more than twice as many cod were killed in the Baltic Sea than stated officially. Here is official landing data from the International Council for the Exploration of the Sea, ICES. In red is data from Pauli's project, also including estimates of discarded and illegally caught cod. The difference reveals a great uncertainty of how much cod has actually been killed as a result of fishing. Well, it means that you, as a public or as a, a decision maker, you believe that perhaps the health of, of your cod stock is much better than what is actually true. You should have no doubt. At present, you are the single person who knows most about the catch of Swedish fisheries. And when you go to ISIS, they will tell you it's wrong. But they oppose it because your work challenges theirs. Copenhagen, April 2009. IC's working group for Baltic Cod held its yearly meeting. The most prominent scientists in the Baltic region were trying to agree on the size of the cod stock. Their calculations would then be submitted as a recommendation to decision makers in Brussels. Lowe realized that IC scientists' estimates of discards and illegal catches were lower than hers. This is because they've used different scientific methods. And when Lowe met the head of the advisory program, Hans Lassen, he immediately rejected the Pauli project. We don't believe your estimates. No. Or your estimates are so uncertain that they don't really help us. Uh, you should be evidence-driven. You shouldn't be driven by expert opinions. For me, I have only been involved in fisheries and looking at this for a year, so I'm quite new. But I just found it very like interesting because you're talking about misleading people and not. And mm. the, I think the working group are misleading people because you lack a lot of information. The key basis is that no one gives a damn about somebody sitting in a PC and believing that you can be an expert in the project. You are not credible. Okay. He said that I have a lack of trustworthiness. And I think that he is also focused on the whole Daniel Pauli's project, his method of working. But I am very afraid to overestimate the information that is available. 
Så därför känner jag mig ganska trygg i vad jag har kommit fram till. Alltså det gör mig ledsen också att det är som det är. För det verkar så himla väldigt infekterat mellan forskare och politiker och fiskare och mellan forskare och forskare. Be careful what you do here. Lassen's harsh judgment was not only due to a disagreement about cod stocks and advice to decision makers, it also reflected an underlying conflict of prestige and influence in the world of fish science. I do think that what we have done is an excellent basis and we're very open about the fact that we don't think that what we have now is perfect, but we really see it as a platform for, for improving and discussion and hopefully we can keep iterating this so we're going to get much much better cat statistics in the future in the spring of 2009 a quick recovery of the cod stock was reported that the cod was on its way back. In Canada, right before the collapse, scientists also noted a positive trend. The accumulation of cod seemed to increase. It was easy to find and catch. What we know now is that the fångs per anstreng is very high for fish. Scientists now compared this with the current situation in the Baltic Sea. Vi vet också att eh, torsken klumpar ihop sig mer nu. Så på så sätt är det ju väldigt likt det vi såg i Kanada. Is it possible that the cod could disappear in the Baltic as it did in Canada? Truth is, it's partially gone already. Baltic cod is almost extinct in Kattegat. The eastern cod spawning is not occurring as it used to in the Gdansk deep and has completely stopped in the Gotland deep. It's only in the Bornholm deep that scientists have noted a positive trend. But even icy scientists are in disagreement about how positive this trend is. Some interpret data as if the spawning biomass has improved dramatically and increased fishing could be allowed. According to others, the cod stock is still on the brink of collapse and a ban should be imposed. Icy's final assessment is set in between as a compromise. And looking at historical figures, the improvement is marginal. How certain is the assessment? I'm not certain at all that is accurate. Vi är långt ifrån ett system där vi har de här stora torskarna. Medelstorleken har ju gått ner dramatiskt. In my opinion we should wait uh, maybe next year assessment or two years to be sure that this upward trend that we have observed in the last two years is real. Not letting a stock recover that wants to recover. It's, uh, it's actually crazy, isn't it? Yeah. When the uncertainty within the scientific community is greater than ever, political decisions are even more important for the future of the cod. But a total ban of discards is not on the agenda next time fisheries ministers meet. On top of this, EU fishery ministers have been known to reject science and set quotas far above scientific recommendations. Eftersom forskarna verkar väldigt osäkra på sina råd på grund av att det saknas så mycket data så tycker jag att de som beslutar, alltså politikerna, ska vara väldigt försiktiga innan man tillåter mer fiske av torsk i Östersjön. Regardless of quotas, the dumping will continue. Thousands of tons of cod will be thrown overboard. An EU ban against discards will be in place in five years at the earliest. Until then, an important food source that everyone claims to protect will be wasted. The cod is allowed to rot 
at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. By now, I'm sure you know what needs to be done. But just in case, here we go again. Don't catch too many of us. Let us wiggle our fins and spawn in peace. Stop the dumping. We don't want to die for no reason. Our survival is not about short-term financial gains. It's about a long-term, sustainable environment. If we vanish, we'll all be losers. If we're allowed to live, we'll all be winners. The sea will be much healthier. Kids get nutritious food. Taxpayers save money and politicians can stop talking their hypocritical codswallop. Scientists will regain credibility. Recreational anglers will be kept happy. Small-scale fishermen like Marcin can make a living. Lowe can be hopeful about the future. And we, the cod, we can start living again. Is that so hard to get? <laughs> <laughs>